welcome back to my channel, and today I'm going to show you how to turn a modern cardigan into a vintage style cardigan. I'm going to be transforming this cardigan that I found at the thrift store for about $3. I did used to have the bottom sort of stitched under to make it a cropped sweater, but that wasn't really working. There are much better ways to make it seem vintage. So I took those stitches out and we're going to start from scratch. I think one of the most interesting ways to vintageify a cardigan or a sweater is to embroider it. So my plan is to do some kind of flower embroidery over the front, possibly a bit on the sleeves. And of course something that makes a big difference is the fit. Preferably, you should find a cardigan that already fits you quite well. Generally speaking, it should be quite fitted if you're going for a 40s, 50s kind of look. This cardigan's fit isn't terrible on me, but I definitely think that I want to take it in a little bit on the sides to make it taper towards the waist. Cardigans and sweaters definitely are a great staple for a 1940s or 1950s style wardrobe. But unlike a lot of garments, they're incredibly difficult to alter, being that they are knitted and they'll kind of start to unravel if you cut them. The likelihood of this changes depending on how big the knit is. This isn't the hugest knit ever. Um, but I definitely would like to not cut this if I can. So what I'm gonna do is just flip this sweater inside out, and then at the side seams here, I'm just gonna sort of sew a tapered line to make it get smaller towards the waist. For most sweaters, if you do want to cut the excess off of your alteration, you're gonna want to use a sewing machine. This is because the stitches are a lot tighter and closer together, so you're less likely to have the sweater start to unravel. I kind of have a habit of sewing things by hand, so I'm just gonna use a needle and thread and not cut the excess off. So I'm gonna go do that to help with the fit of the sweater, and then we can go work on the embroidery. A big reason that I like to sew by hand is because that way you can watch a show or something or a YouTube video whilst you're sewing, but sewing machines are really loud. So yeah, if you do decide to go down the same route as I did and sew it by hand, I recommend doing a back stitch because that way the sweater will maintain a bit of stretch. Here we go, the sweater fits me a little bit better. It's closer at the waist and I will normally be wearing it tucked into a skirt like this, so that makes the waist fit even better. Now to really vintageify this, I'm going to do some embroidery. On a lot of vintage sweaters, I've noticed this sort of diamond formation of flowers that I'd really like to try. So I'm basically gonna mark out a grid on the front of the sweater so that there's a row of points and then another row of points that's offset below that and so on until you're covering the whole front. So I'm gonna start by marking all of the points that I want to put flowers using pins. Then I'm going to use probably a lazy daisy stitch to embroider the flowers. So I'm gonna start marking out where each of the flowers is gonna go and I'll show you how. When you're marking where all the flowers are gonna go, make sure you do it with the sweater buttoned up so that you don't get any weird overlapping in the pattern later. It's all up to you how far apart you want the flowers to be, but I think I'm gonna go with about two and a half inches. I'm gonna start by putting one flower in the bottom left corner. Then I'll measure two and a half inches to the right of that and place another pin. Then I'll repeat that again. And I'll just keep going until I get to the other side. You can make sure that you're keeping the line even by measuring from the bottom. I want all of these pins to be about one and a half inches away from the bottom. Once I'm done that, I'm gonna start another row above it but I'm going to put each of the pins sort of in between where the previous pins went. So I'll measure two and a half inches above that. Now I'm gonna keep doing these rows until I reach the top, staggering them each time, sort of the way you would lay bricks. Sometimes you're gonna end up with pins like this where they're really, really close to the trim of the sweater. I personally don't want to get any of the embroidery on the trim, so what I'm gonna do for this is just embroider half of the flower so that it's only on the main part of the sweater. So I've done a bunch of rows of these pins and I decided to stop just before I reached the neckline. I could continue to go up to the shoulders, but I think because of the distance that I decided on between the flowers, you just get a few half flowers here and there and it would look a little strange. I decided to just do this on the front of the sweater, but you could also do it on the sleeves or on the back. Now that I have it all marked out, let's start embroidering the flowers. For a lazy daisy, start with your needle threaded the color you want the petals of the flower to be. To start the embroidery, pull your needle up where you want the center of the flower to be. Then stick your needle back down where you just came up, but don't pull the thread all the way through. Then pull your needle back up where you want the tip of the first petal to be. Then put your needle through the loop that you previously created. Then put your needle back down to tack down the loop. Now 
there you have the first petal of your flower, and then you can just continue doing that for all of the petals. You can do as few or as many petals as you want for each flower, but I think I'm going to go with six. If you've never done this before, it can be useful to draw a circle before you start embroidering so that you can make all the petals the same length. When you're ready to put your needle through the loop, make sure that the loop isn't all twisted or anything, otherwise the petal will look a little bit weird. The reason this is called a lazy daisy is because it's one of the easiest ways to embroider a flower, which means it's very beginner friendly. Once you've finished each flower, tie it off in the back. Now that I have this flower done, I'm going to use this sort of muted blue color to embroider a stem. This is inspired by this 1940s sweater that I found on Instagram. To do this, I'm just going to do two little stitches going straight down from the flower. Then right at the bottom of the stem here, I'm going to do two more lazy daisy stitches to make some leaves. Now comes the time consuming part. I need to do this about 20 times more all over the sweater. So get yourself comfortable, this probably will take like a couple hours. I've finished embroidering and vintageifying this cardigan, but instead of doing the usual reveal footage, I'm going to show you a few different ways that you can style a vintage cardigan. The first way to style a cardigan is of course just wearing it on its own, tucked into a skirt or trousers or whatever bottoms you want to wear. The second way is to wear it with a button up underneath. That way you have the collar peeking out and it has a sort of academic look to it. The third way is to unbutton the sweater and untuck it and wear it over top of another shirt. This way you can see the other shirt underneath more easily. The fourth vintage style way to style it is to wear the cardigan buttoned up but not tucked in. Then you can put a belt over top to cinch the waist. This way you can see more of the sweater but you can still maintain the vintage silhouette. The fifth way to style a vintage cardigan is to lay it over your shoulders sort of like a cape. There are actually vintage sweater clips specifically made for this, but if you don't have one of those, you can just do up the top button of the sweater. And those are my five favorite ways to style a vintage cardigan. That's the finished result of this vintage sweater. I'm very happy with it. I highly recommend playing with embroidery on all kinds of garments. It just gives them a little extra vintage flair. Now that it's autumn, the days are getting darker much faster, so it is already starting to get dim. So I'm gonna sign off. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please comment, rate, subscribe, and all that jazz, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye. That's the time a lot.